For those of you that don't know me, my name is Anthony Francis. Uh, I own Head of Lettuce Media. We're a social media company. We teach people how to integrate social media into their mix. So that's Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, blogging, Instagram, YouTube, anything that is considered social media. Now, does anyone here have a good definition for social media? Okay, when, when, when you guys think social media, what jumps into your mind? Share. Share. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's a big part of it. Um, but it, that's half of it. Yes? Okay, yeah, voice, so that'd be sharing also. Okay. Relationship building. What's that, viral? Yeah, I'll tell you, a big element of it though is listening. It's a conversation, social media is a conversation. Anywhere where you can go and post something and others can respond to you and they can share it or pass it on, that in essence is what social media is. It's word of mouth. You know, social media existed, you know, back in caveman days where somebody would share something and somebody else would respond to it. You know, it could have been just grunts, but, but it's, it is basically the conversation. It's just the platform we have those conversations have moved on by. Oh, look at that distance of us. Um, but, but that's what social media is. You have the opportunity that when you put something out there, you could be talking to one person, you could be talking to millions of people, and more importantly, those people can respond and talk back to you. And that's, that's really the most important thing to know about social media. So when we think of social media, we see the big ones in the news, you know, we see Twitter, we see Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest is a huge one people share. You know, it, it's funny because my wife, I dragged kicking and screaming into social media. You know, the reason she got a Facebook account was because I, I used her to create one and do screenshots of the sign-up process for my slides for a presentation. And that was the only reason she was on Facebook for her first year. She didn't go in ever. She goes in now and, and she scolds me when I don't post stuff. Like, if I don't post enough photos today, she'll be on me. She's like, you're not posting photos. I didn't see anything from today. You know, but in fact, we went to the Wine and Food Festival last night because of Facebook. And she was the one who won the tickets, which she was just so proud of. She's like, not only am I on social media, I won the tickets. You know, and so, so that was really a fun thing. But it's that conversation. So Pinterest, she developed, uh, she figured out she can have a contrast with a uh, conversation with other crafters. You know, she loves making stuff. You know, her, her biggest one that scored the most points was she made what looks like a birthday cake out of diapers. And it looks like a three-tier cake. I mean, it's, it's something, you know, my wife would come up with, but it's, it's, it's for a baby Chris, no, a baby, um, what's the part of the job? Yeah, baby shower. It was for a baby shower. She did it for somebody, and it was really cool, but she put it up there, like, she got all this response off it, and suddenly now she's like a Pinterest rock star, and it's so funny, because she really is just, you know, she's just being herself on there. And, and that's kind of the way anybody takes off in social media, is letting their personality out there, being themselves and sharing stuff, and ultimately it's connecting with other people who like what you're sharing. And so when I was thinking of a topic for this talk, I'm, I'm involved with uh, one startup where we're working on building our product, and we haven't even reached the point of beta yet. Okay, and we're not to the point where we're even talking about, you know, it's all hush-hush. But the fact of the matter is if we wait until we have a product and we'll wait till we're ready for our beta before we start going and pitching it to people to download and get in the beta and to test it, what is that gonna do to our marketing cycle and how long is it gonna take it before we even get people to notice it? And so what we're doing is we're, and I've done this with a couple other companies, we're basically doing a little bit of guerrilla marketing where we're, we're creating social media accounts that are targeting and finding and following an audience based on our perception of who our customer is going to be. So for example, one of my clients was a, a company called Dental Resource Systems, and they basically sell equipment that measures the pressure of your bite, because the pressure of your bite can affect you and give you migraines. And so a lot of migraine sufferers, they suffer because they have this uneven jaw pressure. So the machine that they sell is like, you know, high five-figure cost. They sell it to the dentist. The dentist then sell the test and the, um, the therapy to correct this. 
So when we think of a, a company like that, who, who do we want to go after? Who is our target audience? Well, you know, we want the dentists to get it. But targeting dentists on Twitter or Facebook, what do you think the success factor would be there? Yeah, it'd be a zero. Yeah, even, even targeting their office managers is a challenge. Because you know, people who are office managers typically do not have a lot of time for Twitter or Facebook. So we had to start thinking outside of the box. We had to start thinking of our different markets. So the one simple market for us to go after was the dentists. Right? We also had a simple market of going after you know, the office managers or people within the practice who might in conversation bring it up to the dentist as one more thing that they can share. But then we've got a much, much larger group that we could target and go after. Anyone guess who that is? Sales reps. Even bigger. Yeah, people people, people, people that have migraines. Yeah, people who have, who have migraines. Or young children. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's synonymous, isn't it? No. That's, my that's the cause. I never, that's the other cause. Of I, I ain't never had that issue. <laughs> no, but, but here's the thing. We discovered migraine sufferers are incredibly passionate. Um, and then the other thing that we've learned is, you know, if you try and assume what platform your audience is on, there is a really good chance that you're going to be wrong and miss a lot of people. Uh, we've gone and worked with software companies and tech companies where we were thinking, okay, we know, you know, programmers, they're not so much going to be on Facebook, we're thinking maybe Twitter, but we really had to analyze it. When we went and did some deep searching, we ended up finding out that the audience was really informed. Does everybody know what a forum is? Does anyone not know what a forum is? A forum is basically a conversation on someone's website. Newspapers have them. I mean, the software companies have them where there are help forums. That's where all the conversation for the programmers was happening. And so we had to basically curtail a program to go after the people who were in those forums that were potential customers for that company. So the lessons that we've learned from those, you know, and so with the migraine sufferers, basically all we had to do was target the keyword migraine on Facebook, and we grew like 10,000 followers the first month. Now, Brandon, we did some advertising in USA Today and things of that nature, but really it was a matter of reaching out to people and getting their attention and letting them recognize that, look, here's a group for migraine sufferers. We didn't get into what the equipment was. We didn't get into what it does. The whole goal in the very beginning was to assemble that audience. And so that's kind of what we're going to focus on today. Regardless of your goal and reason, you know, assembling that audience for a lot of people is really the biggest challenge. And, and lots of times the biggest reason is they're not going about, you know, they're not going about it logically and thinking, who is my target audience? What do these people like? What they, what they have a tendency to stop at is, okay, this is my target audience. And so they start talking to this target audience and saying, oh, you should be buying my product because it's meant for you guys, and you're absolutely going to love it. And that's their idea of social media. You know, I, 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 worked, yeah, I worked for a professional speaking company, and we did all the warm, fuzzy, you know, uh, you know bordering on kumbaya moments. But one of the key things that we would discuss with people was, Yo, know, people don't care what you know until they know you care. Yeah. See how I did that? Yeah. Like the old days. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, you know, people aren't going to pay attention until they find a reason to pay attention. And you're just talking about your product or your goal or you know, whatever your cause is, it's not going to get their attention. You need to draw them in. You know, to me, the magic formula, if anything, is don't talk about your product or your company more than one out of five tweets, and if anything, less. I've got another company that I'm helping right now, and they, they target uh, college kids. You know, the, the, the company, it's, uh, they, it's frat choice. Okay, so it's like water balloon launchers, um, motorized uh, coolers, I mean, just, just all the silly stuff you wish you got when you were living in the dorm, you know, and you wanted to goof around. Well, that account, you know, we've loaded in a couple, like over 100 tweets, but we only have maybe 15 or 20 that pitch. The rest of it is we want to draw that audience in. So, you know, how, do, how do you think, how would we draw in college kids? We're talking about products, is oh, yay. But no, what about, you know, anyone here ever gone and looked at the psychology humor? 
or Funny or Die. We'll put those in there. There's another one. There's a website that I don't even, I don't know what the website address is, but whenever the photos show with a Facebook fan page, it's like, oh no, your tire's all flat and junk. And they just show these photos of like epic fails that are, I mean, freaking hysterical. I mean, there's like a picture of somebody who did like a, a Photoshop on themselves to thin themselves down, but then it's like, they missed the tip of their ears, so it's like their ear is out here, but the face is like, right? it's just, just really funny, stupid stuff. But it draws those, you know, it draws in a lot of college kids to start paying attention to it. As a result, now we're starting to trigger and see sales, and you know, when we're, and we put track and identifiers on everything, so we know if that's the link that they're clicking on. So when you think about reaching your audience, first of all, you need to think, you know, who is your target audience? You need to think in terms of what is the message you want to share with them, but more important than that, what other kinds of things are, are these people looking to find out about? So for example, I run the Sunscreen Film Festival's Twitter account. If we did nothing but talk about the Sunscreen Film Festival, what kind of calendar life would that Twitter account have? Like a couple weeks at best? So we feed out content about films. We talked, like if you ever wanted to know what a gaffer is, the Twitter account puts out those definitions. It talks about the directors, it talks about the, you know, each role and what that person accomplishes. So we're, we're trying to draw people in that are interested in film, whether it be making or they just like them. We target everybody who uses the word film fest. Everybody who uses indie films. You know, we're, we're basically looking to reach that target audience through the conversations that they have year round. So one of the things, you know, I, I was considering a presentation and I didn't want to mess with, you know, just giving you some screenshots. What I wanted to do is find out, is there anyone here that's got a specific goal to reach a target audience? And we'll use you as a case example if you want to show you how to start finding your audience. Yes? Indie filmmakers and skateboarders. All right, that's it. That's it. Well, indie filmmakers, I got that one now. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna, now watch this, I'm gonna show you some really cool tools. One of the tools which I absolutely love, it's called Bottle Nose. And Bottle Nose, now by the way, people always ask me what my favorite tool is for Twitter and platforms, and my answer is pretty much all of them. You know, all of them are guaranteed to suck 90% of the time. But there is that one in 10 times where that tool is just the best at what it does. And, and I've, I've got a bunch of them. Now, bottle nose in general, I, I like a lot. But, so let's, let's take a look at indie films. That would be I-N-D-I-E, right? Is that? Mm -hmm. Okay, the simplest thing that we can always start with, now I'm, I focus on Twitter a lot because honestly that's my personal favorite. But within Facebook, you can actually search by hashtags and keywords now, as long as the person made their post public. Google Plus, is anyone here, how many people here are on Google Plus, out of curiosity? Anything you put on Google Plus is like instantly indexed for the search engine. So that's honestly one of the best ones for SEO value. How many of you are using Twitter? How many of you have tweeted something today? Who hasn't tweeted in over a week? You guys are not on Twitter. <laughs> but, tangent, you know, we, we were discussing this earlier. Um, I had an intern, and it, it was really, it was a neat kid. He approached me, he goes, I'll give you three months, 20 hours a week, I want to be your intern. I was like, doing what? He's like, I want to learn what you guys do. I was like, all right. I was like, yeah, I mean, somebody who's like that, I'd really appreciate it. So I told him, I was like, all right, first I need to see what you're doing. So I want to look at his account, and he's not tweeting. I go, before we do anything, you need to be tweeting 10 times a day. I'm like, well, what do I tweet about? I don't care. Whatever you want, just go and tweet 10 times a day. And so, in the beginning, I mean, it was like a week, and I'm like, dude, I'm not kidding. I'm not going to let you do anything until you're putting out at least 10 tweets a day. Tweet about whatever you want. What are your hobbies? What do you like? What do you watch on TV? What do you listen to? Just find something to put out there. And so the one night, I'm sitting at my screen, and I see him tweet, and he tweets out, that's a marker, 
He tweets out uh, the paleo diet food pyramid. Now they, uh, uh, the paleo diet food pyramid is a circle, half green, half red. Red is animal, green is plants. That's the paleo diet. You know, you eat like a caveman. You eat anything that you, the caveman would eat. So, so he puts that out there, and so being a smart ass, I'm like, well, where does pizza fit? And this other guy responds, he goes, typically your mouth. <laughs> Then, and then my intern, you know, Mark, responds and says, well, there is paleo pizza. He sends me a picture of paleo pizza. And I mean, it, it looked like a slab of something with just crap dumped on it. I was like, yeah, well, where can I order one of those? He's like, you've got to make it. I was like, I think you're missing my idea of ordering pizza. I go, okay, maybe we'll do a podcast and have Mark, the intern, make pizza. And I was like, what about beer? Can I drink beer with my pizza? He's like, yeah, there's some beers. Okay, what about vodka? So I'm just... I'm not letting up on it. So finally, he sends me like a private message. He's like, I don't know if you're being sarcastic or you're serious. I, and I just respond, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so then after another moment, he responds and he goes, do you know who that other guy is that you're, you're giving a hard time to? He's like, no. Who is it? Well, he's the author of the New York Times seller of the Paleo Diet. <laughs> For my intern, this was like an incredible moment because he connected with the guy whose book he's reading that he's preaching to me from. That was his defining moment in Twitter. So for those of you that have a Twitter account that don't get Twitter yet, that's what you're hunting for is that defining moment where Twitter starts to make sense. In order for you to have that defining moment, you need to do a little bit of a leap of faith and trust me on this and just put yourself out there. Talk about what interests you, do some searches based on what interests you, and ultimately you'll, you'll find value in Twitter. It's kind of like with Facebook. I mean, unless you've got friends on Facebook or unless you're following a specific company, you know, Facebook seems just as pointless. You know, so that you, but you, do that, find the conversations based on things that are interesting to you. Yeah. I, I, I'm a, a lover of Quora, and somebody recently posted, what was the first item bought on Amazon? And uh, within just a couple days, somebody told somebody else, and the guy that bought the first item on Amazon had his picture, the receipt, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, really? Amazon. That's so really cool. Yeah. Okay. So, so getting back to, you mentioned IndyFilm and Sam Skateboard. So here we pulled up IndyFilm. Now, by the way, you'll see we've got top links, trending topics, um, recent conversation. One of my personal things, now, by the way, this is my favorite tool for when I'm watching, like, politics or presidential debates or anything of that nature, is this little baby here. And you'll see we have indie films in the center. So, so let's, let's, start, let's focus on indie films first. If we want to reach, yeah. Anthony, you're on potalose.com, is that what it is? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's, they, that's yeah. where your feature is in. Yes, okay. correct. Thank you. Um, so you'll notice we have indie films in there. So when we're thinking in terms of indie film, you know, the low hanging fruit is just going for people who are using the hashtag indie film. But what other people might be connected to indie films? Well, now you can see here it's showing us a bunch of other hashtags. So you know, we've got Hollywood. I mean, that's a no brainer of a thing. But we got film tips, festival guide. Bacon, I have no idea, I don't know what the reference is on that, animation, screenwriters, all of these different things are giving us ideas on what we could be going after to, to target people who might like indie films. And so when you think in terms of your topic or your subject that you're looking to reach, again, this is where you start to think of what are those ancillary topics that those people might be having conversations about. You know, so that with migraine sufferers, you can have Guess what, guess what the majority of migraine sufferers are sex-wise? Women. It's like 96% women. The average age was between 25 to, I think, like 38 or 40. So suddenly now we know our target audience, they're women, they're between 25 and 40. You think they want to do nothing but talk about migraines all the time? No. But what are some other things that might get their interest? And so now we have to start thinking in terms of other conversations that we might be able to draw and pull them in. So for example, you know, the one startup that I mentioned I'm working with, we're developing, a, you know, we're working on a product that is location-based in different markets. And so I've gone 
haven't said, you know, so I've already started setting up Twitter accounts to draw audience in. So we've got like one targeting Tampa, Orlando, Miami. We're targeting specific tasks that we believe our target audience is going to be interested in. So we're targeting wine, we're targeting vodka, craft beer, hot sauce, barbecue. Uh, we're targeting all the different things that we believe our target audience will be interested in paying attention to. And the really neat thing when you do that is you end up with a much more diverse group in the different areas so that when it's time for us to start pushing out corporate messaging and links that we want people to go and act on, we're actually hitting different segments of our own market that have unique desires. So we're going to hit each of those differently. Now, I mean, if we're talking to a bunch of wine drinkers, you know, we can talk about how this may tie into, you know, going out for a wine tasting or something. So when you're in stealth mode like that and you're getting ready for your bait and you're starting to, to make those connections and, and drift out there, yeah. do you set up the account on the company name or product name or? You know what, now I do. In the beginning when we were testing these theories, we, we created these autonomous accounts that were unrelated to anybody. They had, they had stealth URLs we were using for the emails. And really because some of the stuff we were trying was very controversial, um, just automation in social media is very controversial. A lot of people frown on it. And, uh, and my response to them on that is, if the consumer has a good experience, does it matter? You know, people complain about the phone tree systems. One of the biggest reasons phone tree systems fail is because it sounds like a computer and there's a lag time on how fast it can move. Well, we have Twitter accounts set up that respond based on questions and conversation. Then, we can design a system that if you go to a restaurant and you mention that restaurant, the system can catch the tweet, read the sentiment on that tweet, read the product you're talking about, and then pull from our system and respond accordingly. So glad you like the burger. Did you have the fries or a salad with it? So glad you like the burger. Have you ever tried the, I don't know, French dip? You know, you, you can start to get into those levels and that these systems now exist. So now with these autonomous accounts, almost every one of them, you know, sometimes when they're in their very infancy up until the first 2000, we'll leave them, you know, in the dark. But, but we always do unveil them and we always put in their entertainment account managed by H L Media which is the Twitter account for Head of Lettuce Media. And so, so if you actually go and do a Twitter search for H-O-L-M-E-D-I-A, you'll actually find a bunch of those accounts that we manage because that's our way. You know, we, we want to be honest and we're not looking to, you know, to you know, catch anybody off guard. And the biggest thing that we've learned is with all these autonomous accounts is if you stay true to what you say the account is about, you really don't offend a lot of people. We got some really, really stupid accounts. Okay? Is that, for those of you that are on Twitter, have you ever seen that tool that announces who unfollowed you? It says so and so unfollowed me. It's like, why would you brag who unfollowed you? It's kind of like saying, look, I'm so uninteresting that these people all stopped following me. You probably shouldn't bother. <laughs> so, so, of course, I had to have a little fun at their expense. So, I created a, an autonomous account targeted at everybody who announced that people unfollowed them. It followed them, and then it turned around and unfollowed them. And the whole purpose was to trigger their tweet to say they were unfollowed by the account. The account then responded with coping mechanisms for losing friends and being defriended. And I mean, there was a, there was a funny YouTube by uh, William Shatner talking about being defriended and unfollowed. And that's pretty interesting. So we put all of that on there. Now, by the way, guess what the name of the Twitter account was? Unfollowed you. I mean, and, and as profile said, I lead, you follow, then I unfollow, and then you question why. <laughs> I, I, mean, I couldn't have said any simpler what the account was going to do. And we would have people tweet the account, I'm not following you because you already told me you're going to follow me. And then like about, you know, two days later, you're like, you just yeah, screw it, I'm going to follow you. <laughs> and then the thing I'm following is like, son of a bitch, I knew you were going to unfollow me. You know now, that account still exists, but I think we actually turned off the automation in it, but, but it's, it was just really funny. We did another one where it was like Halloween time, and I don't even know what inspired this, 
but I created Zombie Hobo. Zombie. <laughs> so if you ever wondered what a zombie would tweet like, it's underscore zombie, underscore hobo, underscore. If you count all it does is it tweets out gurgle, gur, arg, meat, food, hunger. Stupid stuff. And, and it was really, it was as a joke, but what happened was it backfired on me. And this is where all of this started to make more sense to me, is just because I deem something as stupid doesn't mean others don't find value in it. That account has, I think it's over 6,000 followers. <laughs> it's, it's clouded within like the first couple of weeks was like in the 50s or 60s or something like that. You know, the, the fact of the matter is, People need a little entertainment in their day. They need a little comic relief. And that account, it provides it. And that account, I think it never breaks character, although today I did tweet once with the account using the hashtag, which is very rare, because I don't put words in there. I don't, I mean, the, the account runs itself. If you talk to it, it will respond to you eventually. They'll probably just groan at you or say food or something. Again, it's stupid, but you know what? There's an audience that finds value in that. So when we look at these autonomous accounts that people write off, the reality is, if it accomplishes the goal, people will buy into it. So, so getting back to where we're building these accounts, so love Orlando, it's L-U-V underscore Orlando. Guess what it tweets about? Orlando. Yeah, Orlando. I put in their RSS feeds for the museums, for Universal, for Disney, for the, you know, for Sydney. I got the mayor's feed going out on that. You know what, the account is a good, all-inclusive on Orlando. Tampa, I have, uh, I, I run and own TBA deals, TBA things to do. Both of those accounts, they just target people in Tampa and it talks about what's going on. And it's really funny because I will see the corporate Tampa accounts thank it for retweeting them and talk to it. And, and you know, it's one of those, I'll catch it, but I'm not the one, I'm not doing it. The account I've gone and put in, all of the accounts that talk about Tampa, and it randomly picks what makes sense, and it sends it out. You know what, though? If you're following the account, it is a great resource for what's going on in Tampa. You know what? Our first stupid account was Social Media Rockstar, and it was really picking fun of people who call themselves experts and gurus. And that went Social Media underscore RS. And basically, it was just, it was re the first thing it did was retweet everything Guy Kawasaki said. <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, yeah, I can't do a retweet. And it's funny because I, I met Guy Kawasaki and I was talking to him about it. He's actually seen the account and thought it was funny. But it's, it's one of those things that I actually follow the account because it does run feeds out for Mashable, it runs feeds out for Social Fresh, for Quad World Expo, for all of the different social media things going on. It is one resource that puts everything together, you know, it, it brings it together for me. So now we're getting back to the indie film. So I, and if you're looking at indie films and skateboarders, I think you're probably better off splitting it and going into the two markets individually and then pitch them on the idea. Because if you're talking about making films with skateboarders, you get the skateboard market and then tell them. That's too small. Huh? That's too small. Now. Skateboarders by themselves? No, no, put them together with the two small. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're better off, I mean, so since we do kind of mark her, you know, you can basically do the classic. You know, you got over here, you got skateboarders, and over here you got indie film, and right there's the market that you're going after. Well, if you just target them, it's gonna be, I mean, you may end up with that at the end and send that through to the actual brand account, but for the skateboarders, I mean, heck, you could just go and look for everything. I mean, I would just like go after the tag road rash. I would go after the tag bad wipeouts, you know, hitting the rail, whatever. You know, find out, I mean, Watch X Games and find out what all the terms are, you know, what they, you know, and so, you know, and, and target. Same thing with the indie films. I mean, you know, the funny thing is, Sunscreen Film Fest is one of the largest so, Twitter accounts for film festivals in the country outside of, you know, like, you know, the, the big ones, you know, New York City, uh, LA, and now Sunscreen, they just branched where now they have a Sunscreen West Coast, which is going to be in LA. And I know that we're going to probably blow this sucker over 50,000. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So the, the automated system that you're talking about, is that something that you can develop explicitly, or is that another kind of service? That no, that, that's, that's my top secret sauce. Well, well here, there's things you can do, though, along the line. So for example, there's one company, there's a, there's a pro, and here, here's the challenge, all of these tools, 
You know, like I said, they're guaranteed to fail 90% of the time. When it comes to automation, they're almost all guaranteed to get your account shut down if you don't know what you're doing. And that's a huge caveat because it, I used to talk names of the products we would use, and we'd have people think, oh yeah, I can do that, and they would go and do it, and they're like, oh, tell me my account got shut down, what do I do? Pay me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you know, it, it was just one of those things that you, know, you put yourself at risk. But there are tools that you can use safely you know, for targeting an audience. Um, Social Bro is a great tool for going and finding people. Even if you just go to Twitter.com and you swear, search by keywords, you can go and do an advanced search so you can search geographically in an area for people using a keyword. Those are basically the tools that I use to just do those same kind of searches, but at a, at a higher level. Right? You know a tag board? I am. The tag board is very good. Seesaw, have you seen that one? Seesaw makes tag board look like it's on training wheels. Yeah, it's S E E S A or S W or S dot A W, I think. Now do a Google search on Seesaw, but the really cool thing about it is you can save past data on a search, or you can look at current data going on. So it's it's pretty cool. But yeah, tag board, I've, I've liked that one for a while. Um, you know, any of the any of the tools out there now, they're starting to put these searching functions in there. Depending on the level that you're looking to search, so you know, once you start getting into corporate America and you're dealing with a marketing budget, there are some powerful tools. Radiant Six, Radiant Six is like a, I mean, that's like a Formula One vehicle in search and measurement and metrics. The challenge is, majority of us, if we got behind the wheel of a Formula One vehicle, we either, you know, one of two things is going to happen: we're not going to move, or we're going to hit a wall. You know, it's, it's not, you know, I, I always use the analogy of a shotgun shell loader. You know, the, if, if you've never seen a shotgun shell loader for, for a serious enthusiast, they basically take their spent cartridges and they recycle them and they reload them. And there's a special machine that puts the powder, it puts the, you know, all that stuff in there. My friend's dad had one, so I remember this growing up. And it was one of those things, you know, you can read the book and see the instructions on how to load a shell. But without some experience, I don't know if I'd want to be there when you go to shoot the first one you did yourself. You know what I mean? And so, so there's tools that I recommend that anybody can use. Hootsuite's a good one. Um, you know, I, I use, yeah, Hootsuite for the most part is, is free or cheap. I think if you do the paid account, it's like five bucks a month. That's pretty cheap. Um, there's other tools that I use where I spend a couple hundred dollars a month on each of these different tools, but it's also because of the volume of accounts that we have in there. Yeah. Uh, I had a question about using social media kind of to build a brand or build like a lifestyle brand. Yeah. When you first start doing that, I mean, do you, who, what's more important, me getting my first 10,000 followers or me getting those real, those other brands like or those experts in my field or those, you know, or, or the big names to kind of follow me and get the interaction and get their followers, kind of? Yes. <laughs> that, that's, the right, that's the right way to go? Yes. Okay. Now, that basically, I mean, you, you do want all of that. Here's the biggest thing that I cannot stress enough. Do not get hung up on numbers, okay? okay? Numbers are what people pay five or four. I've had companies that have, uh, they, they brought me in because they went and they paid somebody to build their account, and they've got 10,000 followers. Okay, here's my favorite one, and, I, and I, I, this part always kills me because I can't show companies and without like jumping on them, and I, and I try not to do that. But I have one company that they contacted me, they have 10,000 followers. It's a platform designed for a local market in advertising and purchasing and consumers and things like that big enough to confuse everyone. But the 10,000, when I went and analyzed them, 96% of them were split between Brasilia, which is the capital of Brazil, I think it's capital of Brazil, and um, somewhere in Pakistan. And, and that's where 96% of their audience was. For a local brand. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, and that's what, and so as soon as I saw that, I'm like, all right, who'd you guys pay? And he's like, what? I go, you paid somebody to get you followers. What did you do? What did you do to screw things up that you need me now? 
by the way, great position to be in when you're selling someone on your service. And it's like, oh, well, well, yeah, we paid somebody for them to get us followers. It's like, well, good news, they got you followers. Bad news is you should have quantified what you wanted in followers. You know, unless you plan on opening local shops over in Brazil, you know, not going to be any good. So targeting the people who are in the conversation that you want to be taking part in. You know, look for, you know, look for the influencers. Now, here's the thing. Reaching out to an influencer and saying, hey, can you please retweet me? Or can you share this? One of the greatest ways to piss people off and get taken off the list of people that will ever look at. If you get blocked, they just won't, you know, I mean, it just, it upsets them. You don't want to do that. I, I have people contact me now, can you retweet this? Like, they haven't let us media, I have no idea why, but for some reason, millions of rappers think it's a record label for rap music. <laughs> no idea why, I, I missed the mark on that one. Yeah, <laughs> it really was. I don't know why. Well, no, you know what it is? We do sponsor music festivals and film festivals, sure. so we do reach out to that audience on occasion. But it just cracks me up because they're, they're sending me like their YouTubes or their, you know, their links. They're like, please watch this and share it and vote to get help. And I'm like, now the other thing is, unfortunately for them, I actually do like rap music, but I like, you know, I like BC Boys, I like Eminem, I've got specific tastes. And so when I listen to him, I have that like little conversation in my head. It's like, you know, do I go Simon Cowell on him and tell him this sucks and they should go find something else to do? Or he you know, so nine times out of ten, I just ignore him or I block him because again, they're not even attempting to connect with me. And, and that's something that's really huge and important. So I'm just going to put that back on. Um, Last question about model lows. Does yes. it give you demographics once you narrow in on the, uh, the tag you're looking at? It does not. I mean, you still have to do some searching and figure it out. Um, although, wait, no. Oh, here's a tool. This one. Um, so let me see what I found. Kind of, okay, so I'm not picking on anybody. Here, I'll, we'll go and look at Love Wine. Love Wine is an account that talks about anyone. Yeah, talks about wine. <laughs> Um, just to give you an idea on the traffic on this account, if we look at the last 30 days, it has been retweeted over 2,100 times. This account on average gets retweeted six to 800 times a week. It is by far the most active account I have. Now to, to give, give all of this some uh, measurement, the average person on Twitter gets retweeted 10 times a month. My average accounts get retweeted about 60 times a week. That's considered really good. This thing just like resets all of the rules on the way that it works. But we can basically come in here and we can take a look and we can see the audience, 52% women. Now a lot of this is speculation by the software and the person's Twitter account, but it's guessing that we're looking at about 52% of them are women. When we look at the age range, 25 to 54 is really, you know, our, our audience, which is really good. It'd be kind of disturbing if it showed like 13 to 18. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> then we might have missed our mark. But, but there are ways and there are tools that will help you with this. The biggest thing I've learned, though, is don't get hung up on those elements. Really focus on what is the conversation you're looking to accomplish and what do those people find interesting? So with wine, you know what every wine drinker loves? A good wine quote. You know, and and there's, one, there's one wine, you know, I cook with wine all the time, because every now and then I put it in the food. You know, that's like WC Fields, I think that's one of his. I've got about 80 or 90 quotes in there that it rotates through. One was real funny because I actually got to use it uh, last night at the, the Wine and Food Festival. It says, yeah, I always carry a corkscrew and find a bottle that presents itself. <laughs> and I went to the one table and she, her bottles, you know, were, were, the one I wanted was closed. And she didn't have a corkscrew. She's like, she's like, can you come back in a little bit? And I just like, yeah, okay, you do this. And then they open the bottle and said, hey, that one works. And that was because somebody uh, just a couple tables down, they found out that I own a large wine account for Twitter. And so they gave me that so that I would do some shout outs for their brand. <laughs> I was like, yeah, and that's, I mean, and so, so when you talk about the influencers, 
you know, how do you engage an influencer the way you do anybody else? Pique their interest. Catch them saying something that you can respond to and bring value to. You ever gone to a networking event? And uh, you know, my favorite one is you go to the networking event and there's that person who does the drive-by shootings. You know, that's the person, you know, and not to pick on real estate agents because I was one, but a lot of real estate agents who are in this category, they basically, they'll come up to the table, they pass around their flyer to everybody, and then bam, they go on to the next table. They don't even say a hi. They don't even say, you know, hey, hi, I'm so-and-so. You know, they're just, that, that quick drive-by shooting. Well, if you just tweet somebody, that's kind of what you're doing. But, now you approach a table and you listen to conversations, see what people are talking about. They start talking about, you know, they live in Trinity. Oh, you live in Trinity, you know, I, I work up in Trinity all the time, I sell homes up there. How do you like, you know, and, and you, you're slowly starting to get into the conversation. So, if you think in terms of, get into the conversation, be a productive contributor to that conversation, you're going to get along a lot further. Also, when you look at specific interests, you'll find there's hashtag conversations that go on. Look for those hashtag conversations. My degree is in innovation. There's actually a conversation for InnoChat, and it's all about innovation. And it's people talking about, you know, theories and how to, how to manage innovation in a corporation. Marketing, media chat. There, there's hashtag conversations about just almost anything out there. If there isn't one, start one. And just start putting out there when you're talking to people, you know, hey, if you like widgets, you should join us for widget chat every Thursday night at whatever time. And you can you could end up leading your own chat and starting it and gaining momentum. Now, by the way, you'll see people have started using hashtags like on Instagram. My kids, you know, my my kids are like Instagram ninjas. It's, and it's funny, probably because their dad's in social media, they kind of look at it and laugh. They're like, oh, that, you know, that's dad's stuff, that's old stuff, you know, they just but Instagram, they embrace. Well, my kids are totally into gaming Instagram, and with their own personal social media accounts, we're very strict on how they're able to interact with people. But both of them have set up accounts for the cat. Both of them have set up accounts for their, for their artistic photography without any information about themselves. And so they're always competing for who gets the most likes and the most shares and all that stuff. Well, they've learned the value of using the hashtags on Instagram just to get people following you. And then they've got people who are sharing with, I mean, it's, it, it, it really is comical to watch what the kids are figuring out, but that's kind of the reality of what you're looking for. So, um, I'm just looking at the clock, and I think we're supposed to probably end in about four or five minutes. So, but the, the key goal that I really wanted to focus on is, you know, whatever it is you're looking to build an audience for, you need to think beyond just sending out to people, I'm looking to build an audience on this. You need to think proactively, what do you bring of value to the table that these people want to listen to? One of the biggest challenges for people on Twitter, who, who here is following more than like 50 people on Twitter? Okay, who's following more than 100, 500, 1,000, 2,000? Do you notice as you start following more and more people, it gets a little more and more challenging to figure out what the hell people are saying all the time? Because that stream starts moving so fast. So what you can do is using a tool like, I use Hootsuite, and with Hootsuite, I've gone and I break everything down to a list. And so you'll see like this list that's highlighted, study of social media. And those are people who are basically in the conversation about social media or are deemed in the conversation of social media. Uh, social media big dogs, those are people who I've just deemed you know, at the leadership level of social media and bringing new ideas to the table. You know, I've got uh, this column here, it's clients. This client, you know, this one here is people mentioning me. It's people specifically I've gone and put in as friends. All of these are ways for me to go and look at a specific audience at any given moment. You know, uh, I mean, one of the things that I've noticed is a lot of people don't really understand the way that I really learned to understand how it was, was I followed a hashtag for an event, like a football game, something you oh, have yeah. an interest in. If you great. follow that stuff as it's going on, what I found was, I'm sitting in front of the TV, I was looking at the computer, and I wasn't even watching the game. Because I was actively partaking in a conversation, 
with other people that were watching the same event, seeing what other people were having. So you can use that at least allows you to understand how it works in a way. And then if you start using it, you have to do it because you know if you're looking for a specific thing for your business or trying to do research or anything like that, it doesn't move that fast like a game right. does. And so you can monitor it over a day. At a time. No, that's that's that's, like that's really good. Anyone watch any of the stupid movies on Sci-Fi? You know, like uh, what was it, Shark Tornado or Shark Sharknado? <laughs> Ghost Shark. All of those. Yeah, they, they always put a hashtag on there. The tool which I use for watching conversation on hashtags, it's called Twitter Fall, like a waterfall, but Twitter. You basically connect to it through your Twitter account. You type in whatever you want to search and follow. So right now I have it like in the, you know, there's no panels on the side, but when I show the panels, so over here I can put the hashtags. So if I just wanted to add in here Tampa, you'll see this thing will probably spring to light. And it adds different colors for different hashtags. Cool. You can also use it to follow your different lists. So if you're in an environment where you have multiple monitors, this is one of my favorite tools that I leave open on the side because I'm always monitoring so many different things. Things will pop up in different colors. But it, it really is, not, look at that armed robbery, Sarasota Hotel Friday. Um, you know, but it's just, it's an interesting way to watch and follow that conversation. So with the TV shows, this is the one to put on on the side when you're watching. Now, I'm a huge UFC fan, so I always take part in the UFC conversations. Um, <laughs> Ultimate Fighter, I always love watching that. And it's, and it's hysterical because it's kind of like hanging out at the bar where people are just like throwing out their comments. You know, it's like, oh, what a jackass, I can't believe this. But, but then people start responding, you start getting that conversation going while you're watching the show. And it, it really does, it brings a whole different level to the show. So yeah, right now if anyone tweets out on the hashtag BCTPA, you'll see it pop up there. Yeah, you'll see it pop up there. Yes? Were you talking about like your, your gag, um, hobo zombie guy? Yeah. What, what can you do to avoid getting banned for something like that? That's clearly automated, clearly maybe, or maybe well, here's, people, but. We, what the red flags are is the volume of people you follow and unfollow. Um, Twitter also has a, there's a glass ceiling at 2,000, know, for you following 2,000 people. For you, you know, if you read in there, you're, you're only allowed to follow 2,000 people based on Twitter TOS. But depending on your account, they'll make allowances and let you pass them. And so the trick is to get more than 2,000 following you in order for you to follow more. And so, you know, and that's, that's where my company comes in. We've got specific tools and games that we're able to, to get the accounts up there. And more importantly, we do it organically, building on the audience. So like the wine account, if you go and run that account, it's something like 96% real life people talking about wine. Thank you. you, know, it's, you know, so as long as you're talking to the audience, as long as you follow in moderation and unfollow in moderation, because one of the big spamming techniques people will use is they'll go and follow a thousand people, wait for the people to follow back, if they don't, they dump them all, and then they continue in that fashion. If you want to do it at a personal level for yourself, my recommendation is every day try and follow like 20 people or 10 people. Set a, set a number for yourself. Go and do some searches. Find 10 people, follow them. Look for a reason to interact with those people. They'll follow you back if they like the conversation you're putting out there. David, now, anyone who follows me, the first thing I do is I go look at their profile and I look at like the last page of tweets to see if there's value. If I perceive value, I follow them back instantly. Lots of times there's people where I don't know what the value is, so like I'll put them on a list saying not sure, but I won't actually follow them, and I'll just kind of watch that not sure list and see who grabs my attention. They're making more for it. Yeah. Do you have a feel for um, what you can do to increase the number of followers when they start decreasing you? And I've already tried unfollowing a bunch of people because yeah. I kind of found out about that a little bit late in the game. But yeah, and, and that brings up. Like I, I used to be up almost near a thousand, which I guess isn't that many, but I'm just kind of getting started. But, you know, I was so close you could to have 10 thousand, the, You could have 10 of the right people, people and 10 would be a good following. Mm -hmm. So you could have 10 of the right people following you, and that's a good following. So it doesn't matter the number, but, but I understand what you're saying. A lot of people fall into this where people look at your numbers, and the number of people you're following, and the number of people following you. Well, if I'm following a thousand people, but only a hundred are following me, what might that say about me? Yeah. Or, or I'm, I'm not terribly interesting. They don't want to follow me back. 
So the, the trick is do it in moderation. There's a really good tool called Tweepy, T-W-E-E-P-I, and it helps you follow and unfollow people. And then just use that. Is it possible, Come on, is it possible to get the numbers back up to where they were? Because I have people following me all the time, and my numbers, the number following just keeps going down. You know what, though, if people call it, you know what, that's a good thing, though, because you're getting a better audience. Would you rather have 100 people following you that actually pay attention to what you're talking about, or a 1,000 people following you and reach maybe 1 in 20? Oh, could those also be people that unfollow you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, in other words, your audience just, or your, your conversation's just not for them. Because I heard at one point it had something to do with the ratios of follow and unfollow. Well, people will choose to follow you sometimes based on that, but most people will actually listen. Well, see that's if you're Twitter. Yeah, that's what people do. Yeah, it's five too, so I'm gonna be respectful and stop and go have fun.